Intel has got some new Alder Lake model NUCs that are coming out. This is the Intel NUC 12 WSH Lite, an i5 1240p. 1240p, is that, are we missing like a number there? Or isn't it like 12,000, not 1,200? It's an i5, it's an Alder Lake. It's four P cores and eight efficiency cores. 12 cores in a tiny, tiny, tiny little package. As configured, this is 32 gigabytes of memory with 512 gigabytes of storage. You can get these bare bones and add your own storage and memory. That's that's a good thing to do. These make great holiday gifts. I see you at that. You gave your mother a Core 2 Quad that she's still using. Why don't you get her something like this? It's tiny, it's quiet, it'll probably last forever. You put another operating system on it, which I'll show you in just a minute. Well, let's unbox. <laughs> Well, spoiler alert, I've already unboxed. There's so much, so much to unbox in the box. Intel NUC. Okay, and we're also gonna take it apart because that's a lot of fun. So you get the NUC itself. Then under the NUC, you've got the DC power brick. It uses the sort of Disney style connector. I always refer to it as Disney because I kind of hope that Disney lawyers will actually take that seriously and waste their time figuring that out. Chikoni. This is a good power supply. It's a good power supply brand. We've also got a Visa mounting bracket, as well as a bunch of screws for mounting your stuff on the inside, as well as the outside. So this this computer, I mean, it's it's Lilliputian. <laughs> You're Lilliputian. <laughs> That's actually the name of the website. Um, <laughs> this also is sort of weird. At the top, they have this optional Qi charger connection the plugs in right there like through the through the connection so you could use this as a wireless charger put your phone on top this model no because it's the light version there's just plastic in here but there is a connector for that I imagine you could probably get that accessory online somewhere maybe ebay something like that but i found that intriguing and you can see our wi-fi antennas but there's basically nothing in the top there is no reason for you to remove the top unless you are going to install your chi charger and then at the bottom it's just four phillips screws and you can kind of See some hints here that there might be something else you can mount on the inside. At the front, we've got a power charging 10 gigabit USB type A, another type A, which is also 10 gigabit. So that's 20 gigabit of USB at the front. Combination headphone, microphone jack, our power button. The sides are just vents for our single fan here on the top. It exhausts out the back. It brings air in from the sides. We have our two and a half gigabit Intel chipset LAN, one USB 2 port, one USB 10 gigabit port. So all of the USB on this sucker is 10 gigabits. Good Lord. Now you might be thinking, this thing is gonna be 65 watts with our DC adapter. No, that power brick is 120 watts. If you are running this thing at full turbo with those four P cores, plus the cooling can keep up, plus you're using the USB charger in the front for 35 watts of power delivery to say your cell phone, and maybe you got the optional Qi charger adapter, <laughs> 65 watts ain't gonna cut it. We also have two HDMI ports. Now there's this optional connector here, which comes pre-installed with this bracket, which will hold an RS-232 breakout. So you could use an RS-232 serial port. That's really for the OEM use case. Like these will run point of sale terminals and other things like that. So this will be a different configuration. There probably is an RS-232 header you can get that will connect to the motherboard to add a serial port to the rear here, or even VGA possibly. Uh, maybe you could add an M.2 accessory. I'm not really sure, but there are options. If we take out four Phillips screws on the bottom, we see that the bottom is connected thermally to our M.2, our two possible M.2, and there's this ribbon cable, which is actually a SATA cable. So you can install a physical two and a half inch SATA device and screw it in. You gotta pop these rubber nubs out, and then you'll have lots of bulk storage. You got two NVMe slots. One is for SATA devices. It's a little shorter, it's a 2260. And then you've got the 2280 for your NVMe. It's the B key SATA connector and our NVMe only slot here. Our unit came equipped with 16 gigabytes of crucial memory. Though if you get one of these pre-configured on the website, don't be surprised if it possibly comes with a different brand of memory. This is perfectly fine and reasonable for the setup. Our SSD, that is an Intel 670p, 512 gigabytes. Not bad for this setup, really. That SSD isn't gonna use a tremendous amount of power. It's not gonna get hot. It's pretty good middle of the road performance. It's a pretty good upgrade over the Intel 660p, 670p, it's a little better. Now, of course, underneath our NVMe M.2 is our Intel 802.11 AX Wi-Fi solution, but there we go. 
So if you're gonna do this, I'd recommend getting SATA for bulk storage, for whatever you're gonna do for bulk storage, but this really isn't gonna make a gaming machine. You can stream with this, this would be a great home theater machine, maybe a little overkill. You can actually get one of the lesser models. You don't need an i5 for that even. But because it's got a pretty reasonable Intel, uh, integrated Intel XE graphics, you would be able to do pretty good game streaming from another more capable gaming machine. And games like Stellaris and Cosmeteer will run pretty much okay on this Intel XE graphics. Comes with all the regulatory and compliance stuff you can shake a stick at. And like I say, you don't need to take the top off at all. Ah, so appealing. And don't think I'm gonna peel out of here at the end of the review. We've got more to talk about. Now to call it out specifically, the connectivity on this, there's no USB-C and there's no display port. Those things were both pretty surprising to me. USB-C, I guess, makes sense. There aren't a lot of peripherals that require USB-C. I mean, I don't really see how you could require USB-C. Most people do have type A to type C cables, so if you're connecting your cell phone or your level one text KVM or whatever, even though it's got a type C port on it, it doesn't require a type C port on the computer. And then they're 10 gigabit, so you just use a 10 gigabit type A to type C cable. No big deal, I guess that makes sense. There could have been a USB-C port that would give you USB-C and display port. That would be kind of nice because we are seeing more displays that have USB-C. And we were seeing more GPUs and platforms that have USB-C plus display port alt mode built in. Maybe there's a version of this that has or had Thunderbolt in that optional connector at the bottom. That would slot into the NVMe slot. I could see Intel maybe doing something like that. But again, this is, this is Intel, it's a knock. I mean, your mom doesn't care if it's got Thunderbolt or not. This is a pretty good second system. You know, if you're building a home lab out of this, it does have a single two and a half gig ethernet, but not an easy way to add a second one. If you get it with storage and memory, it's gonna come pre-set up. If you get a kit, you, you, you gotta DIY that. What are you gonna need if you wanna DIY it? Well, you got the NUC, and I showed you how to install the SSD. I am adding this ASRock Phantom Gaming display. It's a very large display, 3440 by 1440 has DisplayPort and HDMI inputs. It's actually a pretty great productivity monitor because it's so wide, you can easily have two windows side by side. Got, for my keyboard, I've got the Unicomp Mini Model M. This of course has the Level 1 Tex controller mod since their controller has a lot of bugs. Now the advertised specs for this are pretty modest, but you can see from looking around the BIOS, it's, it's actually pretty peppy. Max turbo of 4.4 gigahertz, and I pretty regularly see that in Windows. Check out our Geekbench scores. So there you go, that's a rundown of the new 12th generation i5 NUC from Intel. There's a lot to like about this platform. I think they could have put a little bit more thought into the expandability and the expansion. I mean, I know it's a NUC, and I know that you don't need a lot of expansion, but there's, there's room in there. I love the SATA port, I love the options for both NVMe-based M.2 as well as SATA-based M.2. The modular wireless option is also nice because when seven gigahertz or 12 gigahertz wireless comes out or whatever, you could just swap in a new connection. I can imagine that you would be using this thing for years and years in the future. I mean, even those older Celeron NUCs, I still find uses for them around my, <laughs> around my house and giveaways and that sort of thing. So there's options. The Geekbench scores are impressive. Yes, you can get better performance if you pick up the corresponding desktop i5 and, and then build around that in a small form factor chassis. It's gonna cost a little bit more. It's gonna be physically bigger. It's gonna use a little bit more power, but this is pretty easy, a pretty easy option. All you gotta do is add memory and storage or not if you're not comfortable with that. And you've got a complete system. Uh, for business grade desktops, you know, office, <laughs> if you're an office drone or your buying machines for office drones, these are pretty cool. You get secure boot and everything else. Oh, and I almost forgot Linux support. Well, good news. Pop OS works on this right out of the box. So if you want a full fledged Ubuntu desktop experience that supports multiple monitors, two and a half gig ethernet and all that, you don't really have to jump through too many hoops. Although check out the level one forums for the full installation guide for Pop OS because there's a couple things you should do, make your life a little easier to get Linux up and running, but uh, Intel has basically embraced Linux support. You can actually download a lot of the stuff that you need for Linux directly from the Intel website, which is not how Linux does it, but it's nice to know that Intel is testing on, on Linux and that there are options. Your package manager is gonna go manage all that for you, but it's nice to see Intel doing what it needs to do to support Linux. That's the thing that happens behind the scenes more than a you download file, but hey, not too bad. And the performance and power usage and everything else is impressive. So, just my two cents. I'm Wendellus Level 1. You can find me on the Level 1 forums if you have any questions, I missed anything, or you have an odd use case that you want to work in to use this because 
goodness gracious. But yeah, 12 cores, 16 threads. That's a lot of horsepower. And a knuck, a knuck. Remember just, it was like yesterday. It's like two cores and four threads and a knuck. And it's like, well, I mean, okay. A knuck's not aspiring to be anything. And now we have this. All right, I'm signing out. I'll see you in the morning.